Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ishal Abdul Halain, and welcome to my video on the introduction to the 68K microprocessor. This video is the final video in our six part series that aims to give you introductory knowledge about this topic. In this video, we are going to learn what the clock cycle and memory cycle is. We are also going to see what an assembly language program looks like. Hopefully at the end of this video you would have gained an understanding on what the 68K microprocessor is, how it works and how it is programmed. Here I am showing to you a 7Hz pulse train as an example to understand the clock cycle and speed of the 68K microprocessor. Now, let us define clock cycle. A clock cycle is the smallest unit of time that the microprocessor can experience. It is measured in seconds. Take a look at the pulse train again. If this is the main clock signal of a microprocessor, then one clock cycle is here. It is simply the period of one pulse in the pulse train. In this case it is 143 milliseconds. Let's move on to the definition of speed. A microprocessor's speed is defined as its operating frequency. It is measured in cycles per second. This simply implies that the speed is a measure on how many clock cycles you can pack into one second. In this case, we can pack 7 pulses, thus the speed is 7 cycles per second, or simply 7 Hz. The 68K microprocessor's minimum speed is 8 MHz and its maximum speed is 12 MHz. Can you calculate its clock cycle range? It ranges between 125 nanoseconds to 83 nanoseconds. I obtained these numbers simply by taking the reciprocal of the speed. Now we are going to study the read-write cycle. It is also known as the memory cycle or bus cycle. It explains the time required by the micro P for read and write operations with regards to memory access. To understand this topic, we will take a look at this clock signal. One read or write cycle in the 68K microprocessor is made from four clock pulses that are subdivided into seven states. Let's start with the write cycle that is used when you write data into memory. As mentioned, it is made from four clock cycles that is subdivided into seven states, States 0, 2, 4 and 6 are the high states of the pulses while states 1, 3, 5 and 7 are the low states. The signals that are used to write data into memory is synchronized with these 7 states. Now, for the signals involved in the write operation. The first signal is the 24-bit address shown here. We will call it address A. Notice that address A asserted on the address bus at the beginning of state 1 and it is held until the end of state 7. This will ensure that address A is properly pointed to in memory by the CPU. Next, the R slash W bar signal must be asserted low. R stands for read and W bar stands for write. A logic low on the signal line informs memory that a write operation is to be initiated and a logic one for when a read from memory is to be initiated. Thus, this signal is asserted low beginning at state 2 in the write cycle for a write operation. It must be held low until the end of the write cycle. The data to be written into memory must be present on the data bus at state 3. We will call it data X. It will remain there until the end of the write cycle. At the end of the four clock cycles, data X would have been written to address A. Note that my example is showing only clock, address, read-write and data signals. In reality, there are more signals that are involved in the read-write cycle, however. I am keeping it simple for you to understand this at our introductory level. Now let us examine a read cycle. This cycle is used to read data from memory. Let's start the read cycle here, exactly where the write cycle ended. The read cycle also uses four clock cycles that are divided into seven states. Similar to the write cycle, the address must be available at the beginning of state 1. We will call this address B. The read-write signal is then asserted high for a read operation. It is set high at the beginning of state 2 and held high throughout the read cycle. Finally, our data is presented at the beginning of the third state. It is held there until the end of the read cycle. In this example we shall call it data Y. At the end of the read cycle, data Y is read from address B. Let's do another write cycle for fun, this time we are going to write data Z into address C, how would the signals involved look like? Pause the video and try to draw it in your notebook. Did you get this? Good, address C is supplied at state 1. The read-write signal is asserted low for a write operation, it is asserted low starting at state 2. Finally data Z is presented at the beginning of state 3. Very good, you have understood the basics of the read-write cycle. 
Finally, an explanation on how the 68K microprocessor is programmed is presented here. Programs for the 68K is written in a low-level language called assembly language. Unlike high-level languages, its instructions are short, simple, and precise, take a look at this short assembly language program, look at the first instruction, it reads move.w, n-1d0. This means to move a word of data to register d0. We will study a lot of instructions in future videos. It will be fun. Assembly language is machine specific. This means that a program written in assembly for the 68K microprocessor will not work on other models of microprocessors. Assembly language programs are translated directly to machine executable code by a utility program called the assembler. The executable machine code which is made entirely from binary bits is then stored in memory for execution. In contrast, high-level language programs such as C programs would have to be linked to libraries first, then compiled and finally translated to machine code. This concludes our six-part video series on the introduction to the 68K microprocessor. We have seen the architecture, studied the registers, the memory, and all of the basic cycles related to the 68K microprocessor. I hope that you have obtained an overview of this microprocessor. Future videos would include topics the on addressing modes, instructions, subroutines, stacks, and interfacing of the 68K microprocessor. Thank you for your time and attention, have a great day.